What do you get when you combine cheeseburgers and egg rolls? Chag Rollgers. Delicious sounding, right? Or you could add in all those extra stupid syllables and call it cheeseburger egg rolls. Whatever, I don't care. But today on Poor Choices, we are putting together an amazing vessel for burgery goodness. It's the perfect finger food for the Super Bowl, and you can just make these ahead and pop them in the fryer when it's time for kickoff. We're stuffing these with bacon, cheese, seasoned ground beef, tomatoes, and a homemade burger dipping sauce that'll set these off. So let's get started. First, we need half of a large white onion finely diced. And I mean finally because we are putting these into egg rolls after all. I think when I was done cutting this up, I had about two cups of onion. Then we're gonna cut up some classic cut bacon, about half the pack and saute that until it's nice and crispy. Set it aside into a plate or bowl lined with paper towel so they can drain off the excess grease. Then I'm gonna drain all but maybe two to three tablespoons of that bacon fat out of our pan. Over medium high heat still, we'll toss in our onions and saute till they just start turning translucent. Hit them with a little salt as well. At this point, we can drop in two pounds of 80-20 ground beef. As I always say, fat is flavor, so try to stay away from the lean cuts. Begin breaking that meat up, and here is where I'm gonna add in Old Faithful McCormick's Montreal Steak Seasoning. It's extremely good on burgers, and I poured about two palmfuls of it and started to mix. You can use any type of burger seasoning here or keep it simple with salt and pepper, but you definitely want something to help boost those burger flavors. I'm also going in with about two to three tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. It brings wonderful umami flavor to this dish and I am always adding it to my burgers. Next, I'm throwing in about three chipotle peppers, finely diced, and about three tablespoons of adobo sauce that the peppers came in. It's going to add a little heat as well as some smoky flavor from the peppers and adobo. It's kind of how we'll bring that grilled flavor into our egg rolls. Mix it up and then I hit it with a little more salt and pepper. No exact amount here, but maybe a teaspoon of each if you really need a number, but you can just eyeball this. Next, I added in about six to eight ounces of our poor choice, which is a Samuel Adams lager. This is gonna make for some great flavor as well as deglaze the bottom of our pan, so make sure you are scraping up all those brown bits and pieces off the bottom. I think a lager works best in this recipe. I wouldn't go with something dark, but hey, experiment if you'd like and let me know how it turned out. This is all over medium high heat still, and we just want that beer to simmer and begin to reduce. Then I added about two to three cloves of finely minced garlic. Give it all a good mix, and I actually added about two more tablespoons of adobo sauce just because I really love the flavor. I hadn't tasted any of this yet. I kind of just felt it through my nose that it was needed. And yes, that's a thing, filling through your nose. After about a minute or two, I added one whole can, which I think is about 28 ounces of diced fire roasted tomatoes. I chose fire roasted tomatoes because again, I wanted to bring in that feeling of grilling and also just roasting tomatoes is amazing. You don't have to do a can, you can cut up your own tomatoes, but I figure why not save ourselves a little bit of time here. Also, I like tomatoes on my burger. You'll quickly realize all the different things you can add to this recipe. Pretty much anything you like on a burger, you can put into this. Once that liquid has reduced some more, I added in the bacon, gave it a mix and then killed the heat. From there, I transferred the meat mix into a bowl and let it cool at room temp for about 20 minutes. Then I threw some plastic wrap over it and took it to the fridge for an hour. We want this mixture nice and cool before we start wrapping it in our egg roll wrappers. This is also where you can throw in things like ketchup, mustard, mayo, barbecue sauce, pickles, etc. Things you like in your burger but don't necessarily need to be cooked. You can also start tasting here before you put it away just in case you need more seasoning or you want to experiment with condiments more. While that cools, we can put together our sauce. This is a simple burger sauce that we're going to drizzle on top later on. We're going to mix up one cup of mayonnaise, two tablespoons of ketchup, two tablespoons of sweet pickle relish, two teaspoons of Dijon mustard, or you could use regular mustard, two teaspoons of sriracha, half a teaspoon of ground black pepper, half a teaspoon of smoked paprika, and one fourth teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. Combine and refrigerate so those flavors come together and enhance. And also, just for fun, I added in like a teaspoon of adobo sauce since I had a little bit left and I wanted to see how it was gonna come out and honestly, it was the best risk I ever took. Loved it, so give that a try if you can. Now it's time to roll. I've got a pack of egg roll wrappers here and different stores may have them in different places but they'll always be in a cold section. I've seen it sometimes in the cold international sections where like the tofu would be and I've seen it near the cheese. Just look for international cold section and you should be good. Or I guess you could ask a store employee, but why? Get your egg rolls out and then here is how I've learned to do it without breaking or getting frustrated and wanting to end the world. I get it positioned so that the points are at me. Essentially, it should look like a diamond in front of you. Then I take some cold water and I dip my finger in it and I run it along the edges of the wrapper paper. Next is one slice of American cheese. American melts so well and it's gonna give us that gooey cheese texture. I'll then put about two spoonfuls of our mixture onto the cheese. And by the way, the cheese is not perfectly in the middle. It's closer to me than it is in the middle. Cause remember you are rolling this forward so you kinda wanna offset that towards you. 
Once the mixture is scooped on, I'll add a four cheese mixture to it. You could add whatever blend you'd like, but I like this one because it was already bagged. And I know, I know, I'm usually a shred your own cheese guy, but sometimes the shortcuts are fine so that the tedious tasks like making a hundred of these go quicker. For rolling, I'll bring up the sides over the filling and then press down on the edges. This will start the beginning of our seal. Then I'll bring over the side closest to me, which I'm gonna call the back, making sure to keep any filling inside with my fingers. And I'll pull the mixture towards me while tucking the wrapper around and slightly rolling forward. It may take a few tries, but once you have it down, like by like the third egg roll, you'll be unstoppable. I place mine on a baking sheet while I finish the rest of them. And here's where you can just pop these in a fridge and fry them up later or even the next day. Just make sure you cover them up. Then from here, it's just into the deep fryer or a pot of oil. Just make sure it's around 350 degrees. And we're just cooking these until they're golden brown. Remember the insides are already cooked and that cheese won't take long to melt. I think each batch was coming in in around four minutes. Take them out. Let them have a little rest and then I cut mine at an angled Cheesecake Factory style for presentation, but you could eat these just like a pop tart if you wanted to or like an egg roll, like a normal hum human being eating egg rolls. I don't know why I said pop tart versus just egg roll, but you know what I mean. Either way, that's it. Drizzle that sauce on and enjoy the perfect party food. And hey, Poor Choices here, we have a Patreon. $1 a month is all we ask for. It really goes a long way in supporting the channel, helping us get groceries and test out recipes for you. So look for that link in the description. This has been Poor Choices Kitchen, and we'll see you all back here next time.